until to be followed by Martin Whitfield. Up to six minutes, please, Ms. Minton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Three years ago at midnight in Beaumont, a vigil was held to mark Scotland being removed against its will and vote from the European Union. As the final notes from Ode to Joy from a solo recorder drifted into the cold night sky, everyone joined together to sing Auld Lang Syne. Candles flickered, the mood was reflective, but we still had hope. Hope that Europe would leave the light on for Scotland. Only independence offers Scotland the way to rejoin our fellow Europeans. As it would appear that no matter who holds the keys to 10 Downing Street, there is no route for the UK to rejoin, despite widespread polling showing support for this. Michel Barnier has just uh, released his secret Brexit diary, or La Grande Illusion, as it's titled in France, The Great Illusion. Might I suggest that the great illusion included the misapprehension that the UK sovereignty was at stake, the misconception that the EU was undemocratic, the false belief of taking back control. Scotland voted overwhelmingly to remain in the EU, even with the vote, campaign, vote leave campaign promising more powers for Scotland, clearly another Brexit illusion, as the retained EU law bill, a shameless Westminster power grab and disrespectful to, de to devolution. It gives UK ministers the power to legislate on devolved matters without the consent of our Parliament. This, alongside the UK Internal Market Act and the Northern Ireland Protoc Protocol Bill, threatens Scotland's democracy, economy, consumer and worker rights and environment. Scotland can do so much better than this. As part of the evidence sessions in the SEAC committee, referred to earlier by my colleague Alistair Allen, I asked the panel of legal representatives um, for practical illustrations of how the retained EU law bill would impact on our daily lives. A clear example was given as Article 157 of the Treaty of, on the Functioning of the European Union, the right to equal pay for male and female workers for equal work or work of equal value, which is not fully replicated in the current Equalities Act 2010. Another was the Working Time Directive. But it was also emphasised that EU law is so woven into laws that it is now difficult to imagine a sector or area of our law in which uh, um, there has not been, that will not be impacted of some kind. The uh, Rule Bill uh, rips up 47 years of protections for Scotland's workers and environment and workers' rights, leaving any right de dem dem sorry, democratically shaped by the EU subject to deletion by the end of this year. As Thompson's solicitors said, nobody signed up to giving ministers in Westminster free reign to abolish or restate workplace rights like paid annual leave, parental leave and protections on transferring under, transfers of undertakings. This is not taking back control for UK workers. With employment law currently reserved to Westminster, the Scottish Government is unable to improve statutory rights and protection for workers. The Scottish Government motion highlights the importance of a progressive approach to industrial relations alongside greater protections for workers, ensuring that their voices are heard and that they can be represented by trade unions. By devolving these powers to the Scottish Parliament would allow us to protect and enhance workers' rights by making the minimum wage the real living wage and tackling the inappropriate use of zero-hours contracts. And I was pleased to see that the Constitution Secretaries of Scotland and Wales wrote jointly to the Financial Times in solidarity with the businesses and trade unions who have voiced clear opposition to the bill. Donald Cameron. Thank you. Just on the point uh, she was making a moment ago about um, uh, the devolution of employment law, does she agree with me that the retained EU law bill does give Scottish ministers the power to restate EU, retained EU law? Uh, and therefore um, uh, uh, align with EU law, keep pace with EU law, as per Scottish Government policy. Jenny Minton. I thank uh, Donald Cameron uh, for that intervention. The re retained EU law does give um, some powers. However, it is the, the whole um, impact of that uh, legislation throwing us off a cliff edge at the end of this year that is raising the biggest concer concerns. I started my contribution suggesting that the benefits of Brexit that Vote Leave uh, promoted were simply an illusion. But sadly, these myths continue to be perpetrated. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson declared that Britain would be prosperous, dynamic and contented when he signed the Brexit trade deal. In reality, Brexit has crippled the UK economy. The only member of the G7, as has been said earlier, with an economy smaller than it was before the Covid pandemic. 
Business investment has been damaged. The pound has been devalued, making imports more expensive and stoking inflation. Trade barriers have reduced investment, while ending free movement has resulted in labour shortages in key sectors, including food production, lorry drivers and hospitality. The downward trend is set to continue. Principal economist at the CBI, uh, Martin Sartorius, said in a statement, businesses continue to face a number of headwinds with rising costs, labour shortages and weakening demand, contributing to a gloomy outlook for the next year. So, presiding officer, Stanley Kubrick said, if you can talk brilliantly about a problem, it can create the consoling illusion that it has been mastered. This is what the Westminster government is doing. The UK economy is fundamentally on the wrong path. Even when the Scottish Government has clearly stated its concerns, the Tory Brexit ideology continues to drive the retained EU law bill and the reduction of workers' rights, as opposed to safeguarding the best interests of our citizens and businesses. Only independence offers Scotland our escape from this illusion. Thank you, uh, Ms Minto. I can advise the Chamber that we are tight for time, so I'd be great.